Hello, I'm going to show you now how to encrypt your SQL Server communications. Now, this means in real terms, the client server communication, and we're going to make it travel over SSL instead of traveling over its default, which is basically the network protocol or practically plain text. Uh, first of all, um, we're going to create a self-assigned certificate in this example. We're not going to be creating it from a PKO because I don't have a PKO in my environment. However, you might. Uh, so if you're in an enterprise environment, you'll get your certificate from wherever your various certificate is and then import it. In my case, I don't have one, so I'm going to go ahead and create one. But before we do that, I'm going to quickly prove that I don't have any certificates or anything else installed here. So I'm going to quickly show you, first of all, that force encryption is off and the certificate list is empty for the SQL Server. I'm also going to load the MMC and I'm going to add into the MMC the certificate store for the local machine. And if we quickly check the certificate store, you'll see there are no certificates there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create one using the self sign. Uh, the self sign in this case is using PowerShell uh, 4. If you don't have PowerShell 4 already, because you're not running a 2016 machine or you just haven't got around to updating your 2012 with PowerShell 4 and above, uh, I highly recommend that you do. Uh, first of all, it allows you to use this commandlet, uh, which is going to create a certificate. It's going to put it into the local machine, my. My is actually equal to the personal here. Then we're using the DNS, which is the name of this machine locally. Uh, I'm going to use a key spec of key exchange, and I'm going to give it a friendly name so I can identify it later. If you have multiple certificates, this is always recommended. If you don't have multiple certificates, then any name will do. So I'm going to go ahead and create it. First of all, we see that we have a thumbprint and a subject output. If I refresh my MMC, you can see our certificate now exists. And if I quickly inspect it, we should be able to see that the thumbprint ID matches the one on the PowerShell output, just without all the spaces. So we have now a certificate. Uh, we can now go back to our SQL Server configuration. I can quickly check the properties and I should be able to see I now have a SQL cert. Now before I click apply, I want to show you what this actually looks like from registry perspective. Because you can do a PowerShell command, change the registry key, etc. from the output and not have to do this via the GUI. So what it does in real terms in the GUI is it changes a key in the registry which tells SQL Server what to start up with. So I'm going to go find my SQL Server. I'm then going to find the instance. In this case, it's default instance, but it, whatever the name of your instance is. And we're looking for a super socket net lib key. Now you can see a key called certificate here and it's currently blank. When I hit apply, and we just refresh, we'll see that key gets populated with the same ID. So that's what happens. Basically, we're telling it, start with a thumbprint, and it'll look for this thumbprint ID. You'll also see that force encryption is currently zero. That's because I haven't set it. So I'm going to say I only want encrypted connections and apply. Same goes, if I now refresh, you'll see that key value has changed. Now, I need to restart my SQL Server. Now, I know for a fact that this is going to fail because at the moment I'm using one of the virtual accounts which is created. Uh, I'm going to run it under the local system account. It could be a domain uh, account, it could be a service account, but not a virtual account unless you go through the effort of giving that virtual account permissions to each and every section where it's going to need. One of them in this case would be to read the values within the crypto. So I'm not going to bother with that, I'm just going to change it, which allows me to restart with all the values that I've just changed anyway. So at the end of this, it will finish with a, a restart of the SQL and we'll be able to see 
that it started up encrypted. Now to prove this, amongst other things, I'm going to go find the log for the startup. So if I quickly browse my local machine, and yes, I know I did a default install, which you would never do normally to a location that you would never use normally, which is the C drive. Um, so don't worry, I am well aware of what I'm doing is not best practice, but it is a lab machine, I don't care. So if I go look at the error log, so this is the same as you have in the startup log, and you should be able to see here the startup, and we have here the certificate key was successfully used. Now you can also see that if you were to happily open the management studio. So it depends on how you want to work. <laughs> you can do it from the, the error log or you can do it from management studio, go in, then check the SQL log and you'll see exactly the same. So I'm just going to go into management studio and do that one final step, which is look at it probably how 90% of you would, which is through management studio. So if I just go into here, and I go to the SQL logs and I see the current log, I can see exactly the same information as I had in that log, which should include the startup. So we can see the startup parameters. Here we go, there's, there's our key.